Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about noon Eastern on Friday, December 29th. Before we start, please know that all of us at TonyTurner.com wish each and every one of you a happy, healthy, and prosperous 2018. And now on to the market. Wall Street's main index is opened higher this morning, led by gains in health care stocks. However, the indexes have come off their highs and gone slightly negative as we've moved through the morning on this, the final trading day of 2017. And now let's look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we normally do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 benchmark index. Now we see back here that the SPY made an all-time closing high on December 18th at $268.20, or around $26.82 on the S&P 500 itself. So we have, um, we have resistance up here now at about 268. When I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $267.64, or again about $26.76 on the S&P 500 itself. We can see that we have, we're still in a beautiful uptrend here. Uh, we have the 20-day moving average, the red line on this screen coming in at $266.20. That could provide some potential support along here if the SPY decides to move lower. As you can see today by this red candle, it gapped up at the open, gapped into this prior resistance up here, and then uh, started to head lower, as I told you, as the morning has moved on. Now we have, uh, again, support, potential support at the 20-day moving average. We have a trend line that's been nicely placed here since August this past summer. Now that trend line is coming in at $264. That could provide potential support. Of course, we all have we also have potential price support coming in here around $262. We have the 50-day moving average, very powerful moving average. Uh, rising under price, very, very um, positive here, coming in at $261.53, also providing potential support. And we can, as we can move on down here, we can find more price support at 200, and, <coughs> excuse me, 56 or about 2560 on the S&P 500 itself. So far, the SPY has remained in an absolutely beautiful uptrend here. There's nothing we can complain about. I would suspect after looking through many, many charts today that our market in many sectors and industry groups has gotten very overbought. And uh, I'll show you a chart uh, toward the end of this to show you what I'm going to do next week because of what I see going on. Just an idea. Uh, if we look down here at the 14-day RSI, we see that it, for the SPY, it has been trading above its 70 line. This is the 70 line. On this scale, that means the SPY is overbought, or we could say everybody owns the SPY. It's not exactly accurate, but that's what we could say. And we can see how the SPY, the, the RSI here, has been in the overbought zone for quite some while. It was up there in October as well. And, and that's just as the SPY has continued, certainly since August, to continue making uh, new highs almost constantly, uh, all-time highs constantly. So now we see on this RSI, it's making a slight negative divergence here. As the market's headed higher, the SPY is headed higher making new highs. The RSI is saying, I'm not as impressed by your moves as you think I should be. So it's not very much, it's just very, very, uh, very, very um, kind of subtle here, but the RSI is starting to move down, saying, all right, maybe you can party this long, but I'm getting worn out. Now the MACD, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Oscillator, obviously is trading above its red zero line. 
you can't see it here possibly on this chart, but the red signal line has just now moved just below the MACD line itself, a very, very slight negative. Uh, we've had a lot of volume here in the month of December. Now I can, I can imagine we can subscribe some of this to the tax plan that has finally gotten voted through Congress. A lot of people are very happy about that. When you see a lot of volume, though, at a time in the market when it could be getting a little overstretched and could be getting a little worn out, it, we have to see if this volume is net positive or net buyers or net sellers. And we should see that in the coming week uh, as we note if the SPY starts to move down and again takes a much needed rest stop or if a lot of this is buying uh, momentum and the SPY could break above 268 and head up and continue this uptrend. And as you can see, boy, in this market, anything is possible. So next week, I think, will give us an idea as to what uh, will go on possibly in the next two or three weeks. We can't argue with success, though. We've got a beautiful uptrend going in the SPY. Our next chart today is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, the IWM. As I've told you before, we tend to watch the IWM in Tony's Market Club because it can act as a leading indicator for the broader market. The Russell 2000 is the index that consists of the small caps, uh, small capitalization companies, mostly, all U mostly located in the U.S. and serving the U.S. Their products and services don't go overseas so much. So we can kind of say this is a U.S.-driven uh, index, the IWM or the Russell 2000. If we look at this chart here, we see when I captured it that uh, the IWM uh, and, and, um, came in today at $153.60. That's where the price was today when I captured it. It's trading above the 20-day moving average, which is now kind of gone horizontal, something you want to keep an eye on when that happens, and price is above it. It means price is getting a little tired. Uh, and the 20-day moving average here is at $152.34, and that, of course, could act as potential support. We have the 50-day coming in here at $150.35, intersecting nicely with the trend line, which means that this $150 area has become more important as two indicators have come up together uh, to meet each other. So that gives this $150 mark, again, more importance. If the IWM can stay above it, of course, that's very positive for the IWM and the broader market. If, however, the IWM gets a little worn out, a little tired, and has to move down and break below the 50-day moving average, then we need to get a little more, uh, a little more cautious, perhaps. This is kind of a funny pattern here. Uh, it, it's a, hey, we don't know what to do kind of pattern. It's a volatility pattern of up and down and up and down. One day the bears win with these great big red candles, which certainly are important given the, high, the higher volume that we see. If this is net selling coming in here, we want to know about it. So far, the bulls have managed to hold the IWM up above its 50-day moving average. The bears have managed to shove it down lower a few days in a row, but then it comes right back up. So the next week, we're going to see who's going to win, the bulls or the bears. Uh, of course, our goal is for the IWM, or what we'd like to see for our trading, is that the IWM stays above the 50-day moving average. But only time will tell. Our final chart for the week is where I'm looking in kind of a different place here uh, to put some money, a uh, place we probably haven't looked at in quite some time. Gold miners have gotten beaten down. This is the daily chart of the Vanek Gold Miners ETF, symbol GDX. As you can imagine, this is a exchange-traded fund. It has 51 holdings in the gold miners, and these are global gold miners uh, industry group. Top components are Newmont Mining, Barrett Gold, Franco Nevada, Gold Corp, those kinds of companies. 
Now we can see here how gold rose dramatically, made a closing high on September 7th of $25.49, then fell pretty dramatically. Now the word out there, excuse me, I couldn't draw a straight line here, but fell in a downtrend. Now the word out there is that um, <laughs> is that gold is the short for Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin is rising, gold is falling and vice versa. I don't know that that's exactly accurate, but I, I, all I can see here is the chart and that's what I'm going to go by. And I see that uh, the GDX, the gold miners, came down. Well, for some reason, my cursor stopped drawing lines here. Let's see if I can get it back. Hold on a second here. See if I can get it back. Well, I guess it's not going to draw lines anymore. Okay, uh, so gold came, the GDX came down here to about $21 and change, meeting up with the prior low back in June or the first part of July. And then that moved back down here in April. So we've got two lows there down around $21, then a little bit of a higher low here. And gold fell down, making its major index, making its major moving averages reverse. That's what happens. So now, as I capture this chart, when gold's trading at 23.29, we can see that the 20-day moving average, 50-day and 200-day are reversed in the normal order that we usually like them in with a shorter moving average at top. But that's okay for right now because this drop here caused that. What I've seen is that in recent weeks, the GDX has bounced back up here. Also, we have to know that the U.S. dollar is, has been falling recently, and that usually is an impetus for gold miners or gold to move higher. So when I captured this chart today, gold miners, the GDX was trading at $23.29. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on gold next week. If it, if it can stay above this 50-day moving average, which is coming here at $22.56, as long as it can stay above this, and if it looks a little positive, I'm probably going to purchase some GDX shares. My initial stop, as always, is beneath the 50-day moving average here, which is now, again, coming in at $22.56. So a close below that would take me out of any shares that I buy. Uh, however, if we need to get a little defensive next week or in the coming weeks, the GDX may be a place where we can hang out and make a little money. There's some reasons that could happen. So let's just see here what goes on. Remember, a stop below the 50-day is where I always keep mine. And um, we'll see in the coming week if that is a wise place to be. And now on to the coming week's economic reports. But first, please join us. This coming Tuesday, it's usually on Monday, but this week it'll be Tuesday because the market is closed. So join us this coming Tuesday, January 2nd, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade. I'll give you a mini trading lesson. And then I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. And that's with entry prices, protective stock prices, and profit targets. Tony's Market Club is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, not a problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members just a few minutes after the, second, the session ends. For more information and to join, go to Tony'sMarketClub.com. And now on for the economic reports. Next week on Monday, the market is closed for the New Year holiday. Tuesday, we have the ISM index, very important manufacturing index that comes out every month. Also, auto and truck sales. Wednesday, we have the ADP employment change. Uh, the crude inventories have been pushed to Thursday because of the Monday holiday. So on Thursday, we have our usual jobless claims, our usual um, nat gas inventories and crude inventories. 
On Friday, we get the jobs numbers, the monthly jobs numbers with the unemployment rate and ISM services. So again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Tuesday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Again, a wonderful 2018 to you. Keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now. <music>